In this video, I'm going to give you a short explanation of what Node.js is, why we need it, and how to install it. You might wonder why we need Node.js to build our HTML5 web app. I have a few really good reasons. One reason is that for the purposes of this series of videos, it's super easy to install and get up and running. Then once you have it set up, you and I have a lot in common, and operating system differences will be much less of an issue. Another reason Node.js is going to be useful to us is because we're going to use a few tools that depend on it. And those tools will help us move fast and focus on building all the cool HTML5 stuff we're excited to build. The last thing we want to worry about is repetitive tasks, right? The last pitch I will make for Node is that it is a useful tool to get acquainted with. I assume you're someone who's trying to learn about new useful tools to advance your career. Node continues to be a really useful server-side framework, and it's highly likely that you can use it either at work or for individual projects. But what exactly is Node.js, you might ask? Node is a server-side implementation of JavaScript. It can do many of the things you might do with PHP, Java, Python, or Ruby, for example. It can handle web requests and make database queries, just as a few examples. I think this is pretty cool because I love working with JavaScript. I understand it really well, and I can quickly express what I want as a programmer using it because it's so easy to work with. In the past, when I needed to write full stack code for an interactive web app, I might be working with JavaScript on the front end, but inevitably would have to switch context to write server-side code. This might have meant switching to yet another language, and switching context is a disadvantage, because cognitively speaking, switching contexts can slow you down or make you lose track of your thoughts. This is especially true when you're working on something as cognitively demanding as making a web app. So plus one for Node, since I won't have to switch context when writing my server-side code. That said, I recognize we're all often locked into a certain server-side technology and can't do anything about being required to switch contexts. Also, Node may not always be the best tool for the job, but it can also be really performant in certain situations. We're using it so we can all share a common baseline, and we're using it to facilitate some really useful front-end tools that will get us to our goal sooner. We'll use it as a development server, but it won't be involved in any server-side logic. Also, just so you know, I won't go over how to deploy Node.js to production. It actually wouldn't be necessary for what we're building. The code we make on the front end won't depend on Node.js, so you can run it with any server-side technology you want. The reason is that our code will only be static pages that you could serve up with whatever server-side technology you're most comfortable with. All right, let's get Node.js installed. First, you should go to nodejs.org, as you can see on my screen here. Once you're there, the best thing to do is just click the big green install button. That will start downloading Node. Once it's done downloading, you'll need to install it. So on a Mac, you'll have a package file. Go to wherever you downloaded it. Mine went to my downloads folder. I just double click on it and go through the prompts to install it. Once Node.js installs successfully, you'll see a prompt with an important message. It says, make sure that slash user slash local slash bin is in your path. I've highlighted it here. It's highly unlikely that user slash local slash bin isn't in your dollar path variable, but let's make sure so that things go smoothly for you. You can verify this in the terminal. First, open the terminal and just type echo dollar path pipe grep slash user slash local slash bin. Don't worry too much about what all this means, but if you see slash user slash local slash bin highlighted like mine is here in my terminal in red, then you're good to go. If you don't see it, type sudo vim slash etsy slash paths. Next, enter your password that you use to log in to your computer. This opens up a file that you'll add slash user slash local slash bin to. But if you've never used Vim before, it's less straightforward than a text editor. But it isn't all that hard either. Just hit the I key, which tells Vim to insert text. Now type slash user slash local slash bin. Now hit the escape key on your keyboard. That takes Vim out of insert mode. Now to save your work, hit the colon key, then the letter W, the W is to write your file or save it to disk, and hit enter. Now hit colon, Q, and enter to quit Vim. Now close your terminal and open it again. We're going to confirm that slash user slash local slash bin was successfully added to your path. Just type echo dollar path pipe grep slash user slash local slash bin again and look for slash user slash local slash bin to be highlighted, like mine is in red. Awesome. That should take care of it. Now, let's see how Node.js is doing. While still in terminal, switch to the chapter folder that we're in. Type cd desktop slash html5 web apps 
chapter one and type node example.js and hit enter. You should see what I have on my screen here. Server running at HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 8124. What you've done is started up a local server. Copy that web address and switch to your browser. Open up a new tab if you need to and paste that web address in there. If everything is working correctly, you should get the same message that I have here. Hello node.js. All right, node's working. That's all we have for this video. We're gonna use Node to build our web app and it's gonna be really great.